Uh, good morning. My message about the new birth, God's plan for salvation. John chapter 3. One of the basic truths of Christian faith involves salvation and being born again. Sometimes one uses these terms without fully understand their meaning. Today we will uh, study a passage that help us understand better. The new birth or being born again. In verse chapter 1 to 3, Nicodemus recognized that our Lord Jesus Christ came from God. The Pharisees were legalistic, we strictly kept the law of Moses and the unwritten tradition of the elders. Most of them were opposed to Jesus our Lord, but Nicodemus recognized the stamp of God upon Jesus our Lord because of the miraculous signs. Even without Nicodemus asking the question, our Lord Jesus Christ knew Nicodemus' deepest need. Unless he is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What born again means? What is meant by born again? During our first birth, we were born physically with a sinful nature. We need to have a new birth so that God's life, God's nature will be in us. The Greek word translated born again also may mean born from above. Both meanings are consistent with Jesus our Lord's redeeming work. The kingdom of God is the rule of God and is both a present reality and a future hope. The new birth is the instrument that brings us into the family of God, into the kingdom of the Son of God. The only way to become a Christian is by being born again. It is the door to salvation and consequently to heaven. Why we need this new birth? The scripture plainly teaches that all need to be born again. The language of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ is imperative. In John chapter 3, verse 3, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And in verse 5, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And in verse 7, ye must be born again. So there are no exceptions to this rule. Neither sex, position, or condition exempts anyone from the necessity of the new birth. There is no substitute for the new birth. To fail to be born again is to be lost. So we need this new birth, the new nature, because we have a sinful nature that disqualifies us from entering the kingdom of God. For us to understand the contrast between the two kinds of nature, let us look at a pig and a cat. It is in a pig's nature to like being dirty. Even if we give it a bath, pretty soon it wallows in the mud again. 
on the other hand, it is a cat's nature to like being clean. A cat is constantly cleaning itself with its tongues. If it accidentally gets dirty, it will stop and clean itself at once. So a pig and a cat behave differently because they have different natures. Looking at ourselves, we have a simple nature. There are many things which we know are wrong, yet we still do them. Like lying, cheating, hating. We do not have the power not to do them. Sometimes we resolve to change for the better, especially during New Year's Day. But after a few days, we are back to our old selves. This is because of our simple nature. We were born with a simple nature when the first Ed man, Adam, sinned, disobeyed God. His nature became corrupted and sinful. We inherited this sinful nature and have been following our own ways, our own desires, which actually are controlled by Satan. Because of our sins, we are separated from God. In other words, we are spiritually dead. We cannot do anything to change this in our own power. The only way is to be born into a new kind of life. The life of God. So, how can we, one, be born again? Those who have heard The gospel and believe it. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith commit by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And in Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Believe here does not only mean mentally saying it is true. Satan also believes Jesus is the son of God. But obviously, he is not saved. It is believing in Jesus with all our heart, repenting our sins, and receiving him as Savior and Lord. We turn over us our lives to Jesus, our Lord, to control. The center of our lives no longer ourselves, but God. Another way to look is this, and it's this. God created us. So he, he owns us. His original plan was for us to enjoy being with him and receive all the blessings he had in store for us. But our forefather, and consequently we also, sin rebelled against God. We became controlled by Satan and was driven from the presence of God. Hence, the emptiness and conflict in our heart. But God loves us and invites us to come back to him on one condition. We need to repent of our sins, stop rebelling against God, and come home. When we come home to God, 
like the prodigal son returning home, we recognize God's claim on our life. God, our Creator, owns us in the first place. And God the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, paid the penalty of sin on our behalf and bought us back. So he owns us a second time. Hence, we need to surrender our life to him, to believe, therefore, is to take God at his, his word, acknowledging his claim on our life and say, yes, Lord, I surrender, I'm coming home. When we receive our Lord Jesus into our heart, we receive him not as a guest, but as the Lord and master of our life. The whole process is initiated and done by the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who caused the yearning in our heart to come back to God. It is the Holy Spirit who convicts us of sin so we can repent. And it is the Holy Spirit who regenerates us. For those who are repented, have repented, Peter said, repent in Acts 2.38 and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. Repentance is twofold, turning from sin and turning to serve God. Confessed, the eunuch said in Acts 8.37, I believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Baptism is a church ordinance, ordinance signifying that one is a Christian and has died with Christ, been buried, has risen and is now living with Christ daily. It means obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 22, verse 16, and now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sin, calling on the name of the Lord. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of the good conscience toward God by the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight way out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened up unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting upon him. The Holy Spirit is sovereign. He works as he pleases in his renewal of the human heart. We may not know how the Holy Spirit gives us the new birth, but we know he does it by observing the effect on people. My brethren, God is the one who took the initiative to reach out to us because we were helpless and hopeless to change the situation on our own. God's plan begins with his love and creates an eternal love relationship. Salvation is freely given to us and is offered to everyone who is willing to believe full faith, trust in God, acknowledging that He created us and He owns us. If a person is not born again, his spirit will continue to exist even after 
he dies physically, but separated from God and continually under God's wrath in John chapter 3, verse 36. During the last judgment, he will be thrown into the fairy lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. This is what perish. John 3.16, God shall love the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have an eternal life. Verse 2, on the other hand, a person who is born again has eternal life, starting on the day he truly believed and baptized. He begins to have a new nature, new life inside him. He enjoys fellowship with God. He wants to know God more, to obey God gladly, to participate in what God is doing in the world. His outlook is changed. In fact, he is a new creation. His life is now filled with love, peace, and joy. My conclusion, Apostle Paul explains the meaning of the new birth in this word. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come for our sin. For our sake. I mean, and for those who are not yet a Christian and decided to obey the gospel, let us pray. Dear God, dear God, I acknowledge you to be my Lord. Thank you for reaching out to me, Lord. Thank you for loving me so much and dying for me, for my sins. I repent of my sins, Lord. Please forgive me. And come into my life and take control, Lord. From now on, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll obey. I want to I want to to know you more Lord and walk closely with you. This I pray sincerely in Christ Jesus our Lord we pray. Amen. Thank you and God bless with God. Everything is possible. Oh, we sing the invitation song.